Fuji is next up on this year's calendar within the WEC, and it's time for the series to return to Japan for round 7, which just so happens to be the penultimate race of this season. Just two weeks after Lone Star Le Mans, it's time to get back to racing at a track that has held quite its share of world endurance events. So this is the race preview, detailing all the information that you need to know ahead of the 2024 Six Hours of Fuji. The return of the World Endurance Championship to Japan sees the most competitive grid size for this six hour endurance race, and included in that grid size is the LMGT3 class, which will make its Japanese debut here at Fuji. This race will also be the home event for Toyota and subsequently Lexus, which of course is a Toyota brand. Toyota will be hoping to secure another victory here on home soil, as the Japanese mark has won here every single year since the series was established in 2012, except for the 2015 race, which was won by Porsche. Speaking of Porsche and Toyota, they could be the favorites for the win in 2024, as proven by last year when the Porsche 963 showed strong pace at Fuji, and so did the Toyota GR010. Moving on to the participants of this event. The entry list for Fuji features 18 cars in the hypercar class, and 18 in LMGT3, which combines to create a 36 car field for the 6 hours of Fuji in 2024. BMW and Lamborghini will both make their debuts at this track in the hypercar class, with Alpine and Technically Peugeot bringing their new hypercars, although both French manufacturers have raced at Fuji before. The Peugeot 9x8 has raced here for the last two years, and Alpine raced in hypercar at Fuji in 2022 with the A480 grandfathered LMP1 car. Alpine also raced at the Japanese circuit in 2023, in the LMP2 class entering two of their A470s. Speaking of Alpine, they have a slight driver change, as 24 hours of Spa winner and Alpine reserve driver Jules Gunon will race in the number 35 A424 hypercar in place of Paul Le Chaton. Gunon already has a bit of experience with the A424, as he raced the LMDH car at both Imola and Spa in place of Ferdinand Habsburg, while he couldn't race due to an injury. As for the race and the track, as mentioned before, the Fuji Speedway has played host to Japan's WEC race ever since the championship was established in 2012. However, Fuji has hosted endurance races long before that. The first endurance race was held in 1967, which was known as the 1000 km of Fuji, and interestingly, Toyota won that first race with the 2000 GT. This track continued to host endurance races, mainly for the All Japan Sports Prototype Championship, with the last event before the WEC held in 2007, with Zytec winning overall. As I mentioned before, Toyota has dominated at Fuji since its inception in the WEC, winning a total of 9 times so far, and a win in 2024 would mark their 10th overall victory at this circuit in the WEC, an achievement that would certainly make the company very proud. Last year in 2023, Toyota Gazoo Racing secured the victory once again with the number 7 GR010 and it was driven to victory by Jose Mario Lopez, Kamoi Kobayashi, and Mike Conway, while the number 8 Toyota secured second to allow the Japanese manufacturer to secure a 1-2 result at home, while the number 6 Porsche Penske secured third. But anyway, let's move on to the circuit. The Fuji Speedway is a permanent built track, located near Oyama, Japan at the foothills of Mount Fuji. The circuit was opened in December of 1965, but it is worth mentioning that it temporarily closed in 2003 before reopening in 2005. The current track is FIA Grade 1 with a layout consisting of 16 turns that make up the 2.8 mile track, or 4.5 kilometers. Overtaking is possible around here, especially with the long straight heading down into Turn 1 and it also has some great corners to overtake at, such as turn 6 of the hairpin. 
Besides the WEC, the Fuji Speedway has also hosted races in Super GT, GT World Challenge Asia, the World Sports Car Championship, and for a short period of time, Formula One. Also, it is worth mentioning that sometimes the weather can affect the events at Fuji. As proven by last year in 2023, when rain started to appear in the qualifying session for Hypercar. Moving on to the balance of performance for the event at Fuji. And in Hypercar, on the power side of things, the Lamborghini SC63 along with the Cadillac V-Series R will be the most powerful entries on the grid, while the Toyota GR010 has once again been given the least amount of power. Meanwhile, on the weight side of things, the Lamborghini SC63 along with the Peugeot 9x8 Hypercar will be the lightest cars on the grid, while the Toyota GR010 will be the heaviest. When it comes to the BOP for Hypercar, two major changes include the Toyota GR010 being given more weight, while on the flip side, the Peugeot 9x8 has lost a lot of weight, now making it the lightest car on the grid along with the Lamborghini. When it comes to the LMGT3 balance of performance, there aren't any major changes, with the Ford Mustang GT3 remaining the lightest car, and the Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo remaining the heaviest. As for the championship standings heading out of Lone Star Le Mans, the top 10 in hypercar continues to see the number 6 Porsche Penske on top followed by the number 7 Toyota Gazoo Racing entry after its big result at Coda, and the number 50 Ferrari completes the top 3. The second factory 963, which is the number 5 Porsche Penske, is in 4th, with the number 8 Toyota Gazoo Racing entry completing the top 5. The number 12 Hertz Team Jota Porsche is in 6th, followed by the 51 Ferrari and the number 83 AF Corsa Ferrari. And after their big results at Coda, the number 2 Cadillac has moved into 9th, followed by the number 35 Signatec Alpine, which has pushed the Proton Porsche outside the top 10. As for the LMGT3 standings, the number 92 Manti Pure Racing Porsche has not left first place since the first event at Qatar. It leads the championship over the number 91 Manti EMA Porsche, and the number 31 BMW from Team WRT continues to sit in third. In fourth is the number 27 Heart of Racing Aston Martin, and after its win at Coda, it has extended its lead off of the number 55 Vista AF Corsa Ferrari which is placed in fifth. In sixth is the second BMW M4 GT3 from Team WRT, followed by the 777 D Station Aston Martin, the 85 Iron Dames Lamborghini, the number 88 Proton Ford, and completing the top 10 is the number 59 United Autosports McLaren. Let's now move on to the schedule and how you're supposed to watch the 6 hours of Fuji in 2024. The race of course will be set up by Qualifying and Hyperpole, which will be separated into 4 different sessions, 2 for the Hypercar class and 2 for the LMGT3 class. The qualifying and hyperpole sessions will all take place on Saturday, September 14th, and they will begin at 2.20 p.m. and go until 3.40 p.m. local time. By the way, the track is in the time zone of JST, or Japan Standard Time. As for the main race, that will take place the following day on Sunday, September 15th, and the race will begin at 11 o'clock a.m and it will go until 5 o'clock p.m. local time. As for watching this race live, the best option is going to be through the FIAWEC.TV app, but for those in the United States of America, you won't be able to watch it on this because it's geo-blocked. The way to watch it is through the HBO Max streaming service. And for those that are living in the country of Japan, the place where the 6 hours of Fuji is taking place, the event will also be live on J Sports. Also, I'll be going live on this channel 30 minutes before the start of the race, to cover pre-race details along with the race start. So that was all the information that you needed to know ahead of the 2024 6 Hours of Fuji. Who do you think will win this race as the WEC returns to the wonderful country of Japan? Well, as always, let me know all your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks for watching. For more content on endurance racing such as the WEC and IMSA, consider subscribing if you haven't already. On screen, you'll find some suggested videos to watch next.
For now though, that's it for me. You'll hear from me next in the following video.